What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsac. We're doing Luan from Hack the Box, which was released as an easy machine, but in hindsight, probably can be bumped up to a medium. Uh, technically, there isn't anything difficult about this machine. However, there are a lot of obscure things that you just have to understand. So if your recon game's not on point, you're going to run into a lot of frustration. For starters, the application on port 9001 is Supervisor D, which uses a um, not common set of default credentials. The username is user and the password is 123. Most people may just guess admin, admin, admin password and things like that. So if they don't go to Google to find out default credentials for the application, there's probably going to be a lot of frustration. The second thing is this whole web app is just a weather API. And if you don't understand how to fuzz APIs or you don't log into Supervisor D to see the actual endpoint, um, you can probably run into a lot of frustration trying to figure out just how it works. So based upon those two things, probably can be bumped up to a medium, but let's just jump in and do the machine. As always, I'm gonna start off with the end map, but I'm gonna change it up a little bit because we don't know what ports is open. I wanna start looking at this immediately. So I'm gonna do a dash dash min rate flag in end map, which is going to set the minimum rate of 10,000 packets per second to do the scan, which is gonna make it go insanely fast. So we'll do 10, 10, 10, 218. And in like half a second, we get three ports already. This just scanned like the top 1,000 ports and it's 22, 80, and 9,001. So what I'm gonna do with this is put it in a regular nmap. So sudo nmap-se for default scripts, sv enumerate versions, oa, I'll put all formats, put in the nmap directory. But first, that directory has to exist. We can call it luan-targeted and then the IP address of 10, 10, 10, 218. And the reason why I don't use this min rate too often is because when you do things this fast and things can just miss and when you miss an open port this early in the recon it can really just frustrate you later so i always hate going super fast but every now and then i just want a little instant gratification and see their open ports so with that being said let's now do a sleep 300 to sleep for five minutes and then we can just run a normal end map of dash p dash 10 10 10 218 OA, to output all formats, Luan dash all ports. And this end map probably should be ran with sudo. So again, along the fact I don't like running end uh, map too quickly, I also don't like running end map uh, multiple times. So that's why I did this sleep 300. So hopefully in five minutes, this one finishes and this one will kick off automatically and we'll be just on a merry way. But very first thing, uh, let's just take some quick notes. Let's copy these ports so we know we have them. I'm gonna go in this Luan, create a new note. I'm gonna call it, we'll start with 05 and we'll call this enumeration. And it's just gonna be nmap and we will put these results. And if you're wondering from my previous video, this is Obsidian. And the only change I made to it was I went in settings and changed this readable line length to get back these margins. So if you want those margins elf, you just click that. Uh, we have three ports. The easiest one to do some recon on is 80. So let's go over to 80, 10, 10, 10, 218. And we get prompted for username, password. Let's try admin, 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 no password, admin, password. Uh, if we escape out of that, we just get this 401 unauthorized error message but it is pointing us to localhost port 3000. So what I'm going to do is check port 3000 and we get unable to connect, so the port is not listening. Um, it does tell us though that this web application probably isn't just HTML, it's doing something to direct us to a different port. So this is either Nginx, Apache or something. Uh, we can probably figure out what it is by looking at Nmap and if Nmap's not done, we can curl dash V to show us the headers, uh, the server, Nginx. So Nginx is acting as a proxy and forwarding everything on port 80 to 3000. Uh, we can check other pages. So we can check like slash dev to see if that exists, um, dot ht access. And the interesting thing is when we go to any other page other than index or is it index.html? Uh, we get index.html goes to nginx. If we don't give it a directory, that's when we get asked for the password. So this is weird. Um, I'm going to add a new note and we're going to call this 10 uh, nginx80. And what I'm going to do is just do uh, web server on 80 odd behavior. 
we can just say slash asks for auth no other endpoint does. And then let's try other things. So we tried HD access. The other common one is robots.txt. And we see a message saying slash weather. It's returning 404, but still harvesting cities. Doesn't really make sense to me right now, but let's add it here. I'm just going to curl it so it's a bit prettier. So if we just curl robots.txt, we can copy this in and then go over to Obsidian and put that there. Uh, there we go. If we look at this, we can see how it looks here. Um, I'm gonna change this to be bash, just so we have some type of syntax highlighting and it looks better. Okay. So let's check out our end map because that's probably finished. Looks like it is. And we have um, more information we can put in our notes. So let's go back to the enumeration and we can say bash here for syntax highlighting and paste this. Uh, one day I want to put like an end map syntax highlighter in this, but we can see pretty print there. If we look at this, it is a open BSD box. So net BSD, maybe not open, maybe it's free BSD or net BSD. I don't know BSD that well. Um, OS net BSD. Uh, let's see, web server is HTTP. We got a robots.txt. 9001 is <laughs> Medusa HTTPD. Is this a hint to like use Medusa against port 80 to break into it? Uh, I don't know exactly what that is, but 9001 is also listening on a um, web server. So let's go check out port 9001. Uh, my favorite port. But if we go here, we also get stuff. Let's do admin, 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 password. If we escape out of this, we get message unauthorized. So this one is different than uh, port 80. So if we look at port 80, 10, 10, 10, 2, 18, escape. This is the unauthorized. So these are two different applications. If we look at this, it is the supervisor process manager. So I wonder if we Google this. Let's do BSD supervisor process manager. And we can say default password. Let's see, Ansible. Wonder if we Google Medusa 112. Maybe this is an actual application. Let's see, Supervisor 30A. This looks like it. Uh, Medusa 112 right here. So it looks like we have some type of CVE. I can't read that. Let's see, default password. Let's see, Supervisor README password is not sent. Still trying to figure out this. Let's check this, read the docs page. This looks like the user manual to it. We search for password. Uh, looks like the default may be user one, two, three. If we refresh this, user one, two, three. does not work. Oh, I'm on the HTTP server. Um, we can try it here, user one, two, three, and we log in. So we have this supervisor 4.2.0. So what I'm going to do is look at Metasploit. So I'm going to do sudo msf db run. And while that does go, um, we did have something in robots.txt that pointed us to, I think, slash weather. So I'm going to look at it to see if there's anything here. And we get 404 not found. So going back here, Metasploit is starting. And our Nmap is still running. We probably should have done a dash V here so we could see open ports as it found it. 
Uh, let's search for a supervisor. And it looks like we got something here. XML RPC. Let's use one. And I'm thinking I may not want to use this now. I'm looking at the disclosure date. It's 2017. And we have 2021 here. However, the year currently is 2021. So maybe this is just a dynamic value. Um, can I look at versions? It doesn't look like it. Uh, let's do user one, two, three here. Is there a version number uh, like 4.2? 4.2.0. Show options. Does this say what version is vulnerable? 3.0 to 3.3. Uh, if we do show targets, uh, there's no more targets. So this one probably will not work because we're running a different version, but I guess there's no harm in trying, right? So let's set lhost to be ton zero, which is my IP address. Set our host to be 10.10.10.218. 10, 10, and let's see. Let's set... Is there anything else we need? I imagine a username and password. Oh, HTTP password, HTTP username. I was looking for like just username password. So set HTTP password to be one, two, three. Set HTTP or HTTP username to be user. Show options. Uh, let's search for BSD x64. And I will use reverse TCP. The reason why I'm switching to this is because the other payload was Linux and we want to use a BSD payload because that's what SSH told us. Okay. Let's run this and it's not a compatible payload. Um, show payloads. Does this tell me? Linux, Linux, Linux. Um, Generic shell reverse TCP. We can try this one. Set payload this, run, and see if anything happens, but we don't get a session. Um, it's not surprising. I'm not going to dig too much into it because, again, the version says 3.0 and this version says 4. something. So let's just take a look at what it shows us. We look at memory processes and uptime. Uh, memory doesn't look too interesting. Uh, processes, we can see something interesting here. Um, if we refresh, doesn't look like it changes. But we do see HTTPD going to port 3000, and it's using this dash L flag with weather, and then pointing it to uh, weather.lua. LUA is a scripting language. So hold on one second. We'll just create a note and explain it. So this will be supervisor D. But LUA is a scripting language. And we may be able to exploit it knowing that piece. So it's pointing here. We get this dash L. And it's going to port 3000. And here, let's do 00 dash creds. Put it in here. Let's keep putting them in the folder. I have a bad habit of not putting it in that folder when I create it. Credentials. Um, probably should do it in a table, but I hate doing tables. Supervisor D, user123. We can say service user password. Did I do this correctly? I did not. Um, Maybe we need this. There we go. That looks like it formatted into a table. Awesome. We can clean this up. And now we have that. Maybe say 9001. Okay. So let's go back to this. Um, we know port 3000, this is the uh, command that starts it. And it's specifying dash L weather, and it's specifying a script that ends in LUA. 
So what Lua is, let's see what the acronym is so I don't say it. Um, maybe, I don't know. It's a lightweight programming language. It's also what Nmap uses. Um, so let's go and fuzz this endpoint. If we go back here and curl weather, we just get that error message. But the robots are text is telling us it's still harvesting cities. So let's just run this with fuff to fuzz this endpoint. So we can do fuff dash u for URL, uh, dash w for list opt sec list. We can do, what is it? Discovery, web content, raft, small words, dot text. And I probably could have used GoBuster for this as well. There's no real reason I'm using Fuff other than like, in my mind, I see um, I'm like fuzzing a API endpoint. So I wanted to use Fuff. Uh, we get nothing. So what I'm going to do is curl 10, 10, 10, 218 slash weather slash test. We get 404 not found. Uh, test two. We should get something here if we're doing it correctly. Let's do HTTP and see if this does anything. And if this doesn't, I'm going to switch over to GoBuster to try it. So I'm not sure what I did wrong in that very first request. I can probably look up, but we see forecast returned. Um, Let's see, fuzz. Maybe we have to actually specify HTTP in the URL. Maybe that was it. Because it sent the request. It sent 43,000 requests. And we're still sending them now, but nothing happened. So we got this forecast. So let's go over here and copy. And then we can go over to our notes for Nginx and say slash weather. Paste that, and then we also probably want to specify bash for syntax highlighting. So when you look at this, it looks pretty. So, let's see, slash weather, fuzzing files API. So now we want to look at this slash forecast, exactly what it returned. So I'm going to go back over here and do 10, 10, 10, 218 slash weather slash forecast to see what we have. Um, no city specified, use city equals list. So let's do question mark city equals list. And we get a list of cities. If we do city equals London, we get something. So. We want to fuzz this yet again. So I'm going to control C that, go back to fuff, and we're going to paste the new URL. And what I'm going to do is change up the word list, and we're going to change this to um, sec list fuzzing, and then just special characters. Uh, this is a really quick way to fuzz just random APIs you don't understand. Um, it sends 32 characters. If you look at this word list, it's just a list of all the special characters you can do. These special characters generally can make applications fail in magnificent ways. So that's why we want to run this and we get nothing right off the bat. So let's just curl this city command and see what we get with an error message. So do ASD. It returns 500s. So we probably want to tell Fuff to match with M C 500 to tell it to match the code 500. Uh, I thought that's what we'd want to do, but we still error out. Matcher HTTP response 500. Uh, let's specify HTTP colon. I did that mistake yet again. So if we don't match 500, the only thing that gives us a 200 is a percent. And if we put a percent in here, what happens? Percent, unknown city. Wait, what? I'm not sure why. Okay. Um, it just gives a 200 error code with percent. 
But if we match code 200 and 500, we get more output. And this is where we want to look at everything that's returning. Uh, percent is 12 characters, uh, or 12 words. We probably want to hide everything with either five words or one line. I'm going to specify five words first. So HW for hide words. No, it's FW, filter words. HW is um, W plus syntax. But dash FW for filter words, and we'll say five. So we're no longer showing anything with five words, and we just have three. We have plus, which is probably getting translated into a space and does nothing. Uh, single tick, which gives us nine words, and this percent, which we already saw. So if we put a single quote here, we get a weird error, uh, JSON parse error. If we look at the source to this, uh, we have LUA error, attempted to call a nil value. Now, whenever you trigger an error message like that, um, you generally should look up how to do a comment in that language, and a comment in LUA starts with dash dash. So if we do single tick dash dash, what happens? Uh, let's send this over in burp suite. Every now and then, I don't know exactly what is actually being sent to the server because this does like URL encoding and other magic. So burp suite does not. So that's why I always like switching over to burp suite eventually. And I think this text is off. I really got to learn zap and switch over to zap because I am not have, liking this burp free. Let's see, user options, display, HP message, let's go to 18, sure. And font size, let's go to 15. Okay, that's a bit better. So we sent a uh, single tick and dash dash, and we still have this nil value thing. If we put something here, so let's do list. Tempted to call nil value. List space dash dash, dash dash space. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. We can't seem to fix this query, but we have done some type of um, thing. If we put test here, anything? No. So what I'm going to try to do is inject LUA, and LUA has os.execute, I believe. If it doesn't, then I will just um, Google up how to do command injection with LUA. But I'm pretty sure it's that. If we do os.execute ID, we don't get what I expect. Uh, let's try, if we sleep, sleep is a really cool one. So if we sleep for five seconds, um, we'd be able to tell. So we're not getting command execution right yet. Uh, maybe we'd put a colon. Nope. So let's see. What can we do? Let's Google up LUA command injection because it's been a while since I've had to do this. LUA command injection. Go to the first one. Let's see. Some text, my code, end of string. Inject. So it looks like it is, well, this looks like PHP. Um, LUA execute shell command. So let's not look for injection. Let's just see how to do something. So LUA os.execute return value. So it, this is the command. So os.execute is correct here. So what if we just put os.execute unknown city nil value. So what I want to do now is take a step back and just try to make this application work with this single quote uh, comment. So what I'm going to do is go back to Fuff and we're going to do another fuzz, but we're just going to put single quote 
comment to see if anything happens. Uh, we may not want to filter word five anymore. Let's just run this. Uh, I guess we have to escape this single quote. Will this work still? Let's see. Uh, let's do dash FW9. And we get a parentheses is going to make it do something different. So let's go back to Burp Suite and do parentheses there. And we get unknown city. So if I do London now, we have now completed the syntax. So I'm guessing if I thought more about this, the variable name would be like uh, where defined like this. And what we're doing is just ending that piece by putting this in. So now we can begin the next command. So let's try os.execute id. And we get a response here. So now this is good. Um, the one thing that I don't know about BSD is if we can do a normal reverse shell. So if we do bash echo uh, dev tcp 10, 10, 14, 1, let's uh, 14, 4, send it to 9002. If we do nc lvnp 9002. I'm going to do it in a different pane real quick because we have to take notes of what we did there. We don't get anything. But if I do curl 10, 10, 14, 2, 9,001, uh, 9,002, maybe I have to put a space here in URL encode. Do we have curl? Oh, shoot. Uh, 10, 10, 14, 4, not 2. There we go. So let's try this bash again real quick. So if we control Z all the way here, bash echo, I was doing 9002. Let's URL encode this. We don't have anything. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's take a step back real quick and just do fuff. So if we copy this, go back to Obsidian, engine X, uh, bash. And at the end of the video, I will go over all the things I took notes on. So bash. Okay. And we can go to, where is it? This one. Grab this. Copy. Paste. Oh, that did not copy well there. Uh, let's just fix that real quick. Every now and then, I don't know what's going on, but my Tmux puts a lot of trailing spaces. I think it's why I'm in edit mode and uh, go up. So I gotta figure out what's the fix to that. There we go. Just let myself know I trimmed it. There we go. Okay. So now we have notes of that. And we got to get a shell. So what I'm going to do is make the dub dub dub. I'm going to go in dub dub dub, and we're going to listen on two ports. The very first one's just going to be a web server, so Python three HTTP server, and then this next one's going to be the reverse shell. And we could probably do it without this web server. However, it's just easier with the web server because we don't have to worry about bad characters, URL encoding, and things like that. We just send a request. So we're going to curl ten ten fourteen four port eight thousand slash shell.sh, and we should just see a 404 error. That's good. We're just confirming that we can get there. So now I'm going to go to Google, reverse shell cheat sheet. I misspelled that horribly. Uh, there we go. I love when I can just figure out what I wanted to say. I'm going to look for a shell. Um, Netcat OpenBSD sounds good. So let's grab this, and I'm going to create rev.sh and let's change the IPN port. So this is going to be 10, 10, 14, 4 and port 9001. Okay, so now when I hit go on this burp suite window, it should hit that shell. Uh, we call it shell.sh. It's rev. 
uh, move rev.sh in dub dub dub. Okay. So now we can just pipe this over to bash. And we got it. We just didn't get a shell. Uh, let's try sh. No response. And there we go. We got a shell. Um, I'm guessing bash just doesn't exist on this box. If we do find slash to dev null, grep for bash. Uh, yeah, there is no bash binary here. So if you look at where we are, we're in dub dub dub, and oh, there is a .ht passwd file in this. If we cat this, is this gonna be just the uh, user? No. I was thinking this could be um, user one, two, three, the supervisor D. But no, we have this web API user, and it looks like it is MD5 crypted. So let's go into the Kraken. And oh, it's actually offline right now. Shoot. Um, I forgot to power that on before I did this video. Uh, let's do PW. Let's see if Hashcat will crack in a VM. Uh, never really tried this. If it doesn't, I will go power on my box so we can use it to crack. So let's see. Um, hashcat dash dash example hashes uh, less MD5 crypt. It is mode 500. So hashcat dash M 500. Uh, PW is what I called it. And we want to do user share word list rock you dot text. And will it start uh, token length exemption? VPW. Uh, let's do dash dash user. So it was um, user colon password. Uh, so I just added dash dash user to tell Hashcat that the username is before the password. And is it actually? Yeah, it looks like it'll just use my uh, CPU. So we'll see how long this takes. And if it takes too long, I'll just give up and go power on my other box. Well, this wasn't intended, but I guess we're gonna see how well Obsidian can recover because if you looked up there, um, my VM froze as soon as I ran Hashcat. So <laughs> this is why I say never run Hashcat in a VM because who knows what will happen. Um, also, my Kraken doesn't appear to be powering back online after I moved it and I probably just have to bring a monitor down and hook it up and hit a key or something. So what we're going to do is try to do John. And if John doesn't work in this VM, then I will run Hashcat on my host and show you that. But yeah, we're just having a little bit issues getting into the cracking piece. Um, hopefully Obsidian saves as I go every time like I leave the note. Hopefully it's saving in the background so we don't have to retype our notes because uh, valuable lesson. Always save. Um, saving is important. So we'll resume the video once this VM is booted back up. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Let's see if Obsidian actually recovers my notes. And oh, it does. Um, I think we got everything. Um, this page may be missing something or maybe I just didn't take a good note here. Uh, this is running processes. And we can say, default creds, user one, two, three. And we probably should have put the domain where we got this um, on read the docs. I remember the domain was read the docs something. But whenever you say there's a default cred somewhere, always provide the link showing, yes, this is default or on the internet because applications have multiple default creds. So it's always good to point it out because sometimes you may think admin password was default when they actually set that, which is silly. but. I digress. Let's go on and I'm going to try to use John on this. So dash dash word list equals user share word list uh, rock you dot text. And did it crack? Uh, no such file dictionary. LS user share word list. Word list has an S on the end. There we go. And wow. It cracks super fast. It is I am the best as web API user. So let's try SSHing in with this. So SSH web API underscore user. And we can say I am the best at 10, 10, 10. Wait. 
I don't know what I'm thinking there. Web API user 10.10.10.218. Uh, and the password of I am the best. Uh, denied, public key. So we can't SSH in. Uh, we should do a reverse shell. And if we took better notes, this would be super quick, but apparently we don't have a note of this. So let's do Python 3-M HTTP server NC LVNP 80, uh, uh, 9001. Thankfully, we do have this rev.sh, which does make it easier. So we can curl 10, 10, 10, 218, weather forecast, and it was city is equal to. Um, I'm going to escape the single quote, and then we'll do a uh, parenthesis os.execute uh, curl 10, 10. I wonder if I should do a space, probably. 10, 10. 14.4, port 8000, rev.sh, pipe it to sh, and, and comment. Let's see, put this in quotes. Tempted to call a nil value. So we didn't even get the, um, anything working. There we go. I didn't need to escape that. So we got a reverse shell, and what I'm going to do is uh, notate this. So let's copy, go to Obsidian, and we'll say 20 rev shell, and we can just paste and say the contents of rev.sh. is this. And what I'm also going to do is put these on each line so it's easier to read. There we go. So now we have this. We're as dub 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 and inside of for a dub dub dub, there was a credential. So we can copy this. And then paste that as well. Okay. And we should go over here into our creds table and say question mark. It was web API underscore user. I am the best. I think it was that ht yep web api user so now we have to figure out what this user is if you remember going back all the way to the beginning uh when we first accessed um 127 or the web server it asked for a credential so let's try that uh firefox saved a bunch of pages that's helpful but we can try 10 10 10 218 web api underscore user i am the best and we get a different thing so we can have weather forecast city list so it looks like maybe it's the same thing let's put a single quote uh single quote well no that directed us right where we were so there's nothing different here we're going to 18 weather forecast so I'm not exactly sure what this is. If we go on this box, do a net stat. I probably should have done like um, dash n to not do DNS lookup. So let's control C out of that. Do this ref shell again. Thankfully, super quick because we have um, the one liner. So let's do which Python uh, echo path. So we have a path. Python, Python 3, Python 3.7. Okay, Python 3.7 exists. So I was doing that, so we can do Python 3.7-c, import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash. Oh, we don't have bash. Bin sh, Does this, is this going to work? 
uh, sdty raw minus echo fg enter enter does not look like it works but at least i have control c now so i don't have tab autocomplete but if i control c it doesn't kill my shell um i'll live with that so lsla we got ht pass wd let's do nets.an uh let's see netstat anlp netstat peanut wait netstat dash peanut <laughs> not unknown or okay uh bsd has different arguments than uh linux so that's what i'm struggling with now let's export term is equal to x term can i clear the screen no uh let's see netstat dash an let's just go look at this uh, we can do netstat dash an grep for listen and we do have another port we have 3001 so we got 3000 3001 if i do ps dash ef uh, maybe auxw there we go let's see ps dash auxw grep 3001 we can see how this one is started so we have a dash u flag uh we have dash u here x s dash i let's see this run is running as r michaels so what i'm going to try to do su dash r dot michaels i did rm as yeah r dot michaels i am the best can't authenticate okay so let's see we have to get the rest of this output and it's truncating something because this weather went longer so i'm going to do is go back to this 9001 thing to see if this can help me so if we go 9001 user 123 if we do processes is 3001 even here it is not uh refresh i don't know user one two three I'm not sure exactly how this process thing is running, but we're not getting all the processes. If I tail standard out, do we get more? Okay, we have the rest of 3001. I'm sure there was probably a way we could have done like some terminal magic to get more stuff out of here, but wasn't sure. And I see it here. Uh, I wonder if Dash is here. No. So we got this and we can look at all, all the arguments. Uh, we have home R Michaels web API weather.lua. So if we cat this, uh, permission denied, uh, dash P, this is gonna be the PID of this web server. U, probably the user to run it as R Michaels and B, the directory. And we can't get into this directory, right? curl slash uh i don't know why i did curl slash yeah permission denied uh we can do a curl and go back to our one-liner so if we go back to this rev shell go to curl and we're going to change this os.execute to be something else uh let's see let's just copy this piece curl 127.001.3001. Okay. Weather forecast ID. Like that. Uh, Got to put it in quotes. Curl, double quote. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like we have this command injection anymore. So let's see, we can do, let's go back here, man on HTTPD, um, dash H, let's see, netbsd httpd, uh, netbsd http, d, 
let's see. I want to look at all these arguments. So what arguments are different between these two web servers? Where is it? Come on. Okay. So let's copy this command. Go to supervisor D. And we can paste that. And then I also want to look at this to see how these arguments are different. So we got USXI 127. So the differences are going to be, uh, let's see, dash I, port is different. Uh, the L is the same, uh, location of LUA. And then let's see, we have a dash P. So we specified PID, we don't have a PID here. So dash P, PID, dash U, user, and dash B, home directory. So these are three things I wanna look at. Um, the port difference, not really of interest, but I wanna see how this user and home directory parameter works because we may be able to have something here. And then if this doesn't work, we're gonna go back to fuzzing the um, this thing. The reason why I didn't is because I'm lazy. Uh, we don't have SSH here, so I'd have to copy a program that does like a proxy so I can access port 3001 on localhost. So I don't feel like copying any programs over just yet. Um, trying to think what the program name is. I'm drawing a complete blank. It is uh, Chisel. Um, chisel is what I was looking for. So let us um, go and find this. So we want to look at NetBSD thing. And I don't know if this was it because this doesn't have all the flags we want. Um, oh, yeah, it does. Here we go. Dash U. So username. Uh, causes HTTP switch to the user and the groups of username after initialization. It's like dash T. So nothing interesting there. Let's go to B is B home directory. Uh, let's see, dash B enables daemon mode. So uh, B is probably background. So it's background switch to user. We're gonna look at dash P next. Uh, let's see, dash P, uh, public directory. So that's not daemon, that is public directory. Directory. So that was going, wait. I probably looked at lowercase. Yeah, this is PID. Uh, lowercase P would be that. Uh, let's see, the port, nothing interesting there. Let's look at these other arguments, dash U, X, and S. So dash U, dash X, dash S. Always important to know what is running. Let's see, dash U, enables transformation of uniform resource locators. Oh, that's where we actually can access users home directory. Um, and both of those had it, right? Uh, let's see. This is 3000 dash U. Yep. So enables user DIR dash X directory indexing. So DIR indexing. This is like that. Um, if you go to a page that doesn't have index.html, it just lists all the directories. The last one we want is dash S. Let's see. Uh, logging, so this is logging to std error. So right now this user directory is interesting to me. We have a shell on the server now, so we can cat etsy pass wd and look for the users on the box, which is probably just root. <laughs> Weird, there's a tor user. su-tor. 
Okay, I came in SEO. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if that's a default user or that's just what I'm used to seeing like a backdoor user. Um, I'm guessing it's a default user because it's a born again. Like if a backdoor is created, they probably wouldn't create that description. Uh, let's do our Michaels. So curl 10, 10, 10, 218 slash. I copied a bunch of ANSI characters. Our Michaels not found. Let's do root not found. Let's try 3001. Curl localhost 3001 r.michaels unauthorized. So that's different. Uh, let's do the web API user. So is it curl dash dash user web API underscore user the password of I am the best I think that's how you do users in curl and we get a page so we have a, a directory listing index of our Michaels and the reason why this one probably worked is um, it's running as our Michael, so it has the permission to, is my guess. Because we're running as Nginx, and Nginx, or the, oh, we can get root. But the other Nginx server probably just doesn't have permission to any of those directories. Uh, root doesn't exist. Okay. So we can get this ID RSA. So let's copy this. I'll just copy the whole thing. And we'll go to Rev Shell. We may want to create another one actually and say um, 25 3001. I kind of regret saying I'm going to start taking notes as I go because taking notes live on video is just. I don't know why, but it's painful. Let's go over here and curl this. Let's do ID RSA. And we get an SSH key. So let's try using this SSH key. I'm copying it. And this will finally let us get away from this reverse shell, which will give us the up arrow. So let's v r dot Michaels, paste the key, chmod 600, SSH dash I, the key, R dot Michaels at 10, 10, 10, 218. Can you let me in? It is. So welcome to NetBSD. Uh, we can get the user.txt. And if we look at this, there is a GNU PG directory. If we go in there, it's just some um, key rings. So let's try... Um, do as, which is BSD's pseudo. If we do do as, who am I? It requires a password. We don't have a password. We can try I am the best again. And authentication failed. But there is this backups and devel directory. So let's go into backups. I just don't have tab auto complete. That's annoying. Uh, CD dot dot, CD. I do have back tab auto complete. I was just in a directory. We have this tar file that is encrypted. And if we look at uh, Devel, let's go Web API. Do we have any other credentials? Less weather dot LUA. I don't see any passwords. Go dub 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 index. There's a dot ht pass wd, and this is the Web API user that we got before. So. Nothing interesting here. That's odd that it's in that directory. I guess both web servers run here. The 3001's web API and 3000's www or something. So we have to figure out how to deal with this tar file. And I'm guessing it's just encrypted based upon it saying .enc on the end. If we do a file against it, we just get data. It, we don't get tar. If I do history, uh, it's just showing my history. So let's see, NetBSD encryption. Let's see, crypto 
graphic device, NetBSD, encrypt file. We got NetPGP. So we can try NetPGP decrypt. And this may work because we just have the um, GNU PG keys in our home directory. So let's do NetPGP decrypt uh, the file name temp. Let's see. Temp test. Can't open. What was it? Was it? Do we do it the other way? Do we do decrypt? Did that just go to standard out? Let's see. Dash dash decrypt. Dash dash output equals. So let's do dash dash output slash temp backup dot tar dot gz. CD slash temp tar dash z xvf backups and we got exactly what we had before. Devel dub 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 is this file different? The past wd diff dot past wd or ht past wd and home what was it? R. Michael's Devel web. It's Devel dub 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 and then dot ht past wd. So these are different files. So let's just try decrypting this one or cracking it. So grab this v pw paste this john i don't have that so john pw word list is equal to user share word list rock you dot text and we get the password of little bear so if we do do as who am i little bear we get root so do as sh little bear and we are now root. So hope you guys enjoy this box. Take care. And I will not see you next week yet because we have to fix these notes. So let's see. Web API user. We have r.r Michaels. So this is SSH. Uh, let's see. Local. We'll call this BSD. OS. OS is the type of credit it is. Little bear. And this is web. And password. I'm going to do description. I'm going to say default cred. This one was in um, .ht passwd. And this is an encrypted backup HD past WD. Okay. If we look at this. Maybe it doesn't like the periods. Oh, dash, 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 that. There we go. So now we look at this page. Good. Enumeration. Uh, we should probably go, oh, we do have a map of everything. So this 9001 also a web port, so we can say 9001 running Medusa um, supervisor server default creds of user 123. Okay, Nginx. So the very first thing on the Nginx server, we noticed odd behavior, um, slash ask for authentication when no other endpoint did. And this is showing it. So robots.txt says whether exist. Okay. And then slash weather. 
we fuzz this API. Um, the reason why we fuzz this API was based upon supervisor D and the robots.txt. So um, looked for API endpoints underneath slash weather based upon robots text and supervisor D. Okay. And let's see, we can always snip this header out real quick. And this is found forecast. This one is injection. So we found injection within weather forecast. And here we have, what is this one? Um, identifying valid injection payload. So the reason for this one is we fuzzed with a single quote and a comment to find out how to close off this because we are trying to um, get this single quote to not kill the application. So get to not error the app. There we go. Okay. Supervisor D. We got default creds. Uh, we only just said read the docs. Uh, we can probably now go here, read the docs. Uh, not that one. PDF latest. Okay. So we can say read the docs, give them a link. And then we also would probably want to do password and go here and print screen, copy this. Uh, before we do that, we should probably highlight where the password is. So like that, there we go. And paste the password. Okay, running processes. Let's see, two interesting processes. Had to tail std out in supervisor D to see this. And this one is HTPD, argument descriptions. Okay, the rev shell. And then this is kind of where our notes fall apart. So let's see. Getting a shell. This is contents of rev.sh. Location of .ht passwd. And let's see, this one is um, getting our Michael's SH key. The password is from, let's see, HD past WD, readable by Nginx. And then with our Michaels, the last thing we did was have to decrypt. So if we do lsla on home, we can say, oh, we're still root. lsla on dot gnu pgp, lsla home gnu pg. We have key rings. So let's see, get a new thing. Uh, 30 are Michaels. And we did um, G 
GNU PGP key. Okay. And then with that key, we could decrypt um, backups. So ls um, so if we go backups I'll just do what was it? What was the command we did? diff there we go So we can copy this. So this very first one is user has PGP keys. These PGP keys decrypt a backup. User's password is in HD passwd. So really bad notes for this one, but at least we have notes, <laughs> I guess. Uh, only took one picture. That feels low. But hopefully, as I do notes more throughout these videos, um, we take better notes eventually. And you'll get to see me improving my process of note taking because this one, we didn't really do a great job, but we still took them. Uh, I'm going to try catting this to all.md. And let's see if we export this as PDF, what does it look like? So export to PDF, sure, uh, sure. Places, oh, it opened it for me. So we can see notes for everything we took. Um, not the best notes, definitely not good enough for a blog post, but it's better than not having anything. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Take care, and I will see you all next week.